Hello, in this video we're in the multiple linear regression setting and we're going to look at the hat matrix because it plays such a vital role in multiple linear regression. <laughs> now this is the 23rd video in this playlist and I really recommend that you watch videos 21 and 22 which is an introduction in the multiple linear regression model and a derivation of the least squares estimates for the multiple linear regression model. And as a reminder, this is the multiple linear regression model. It's uh, a y, this n by 1 vector. This is a design matrix. This is the matrix of beta parameters and, and epsilon. Now, in deriving the least squares estimates, we kept seeing this, ma this matrix multiplication, x, x transpose, x inverse, x transpose. And we started calling it just H, and it's called the hat matrix. And here's the reason why. When we derive the fitted model, and that means the least squares estimate for our beta parameters, so it's X beta hat, um, we call that the fitted model, Y hat. But as a reminder, the least squares estimates for beta, which were in the previous video, uh, 22 in the playlist, is this times Y. So this x is this x, and then what follows is the least squares estimates for beta hat. Now, we generically called everything in front of y h, and that's the hat matrix. And the reason they call it the hat matrix is when you pre-multiply y by h, you put a hat on y. So it puts a hat on y. It's the hat matrix. And that's really the reason that they call it that. We also learned that the residuals in matrix notation. Now the residuals is or is is from the fitted model, you know, and we we uh, subtract over the, you know, y is equal to the y hat plus e, and so then we subtract over y hat. So it's what it's this. Now and then we derive that it is in matrix notation i minus h y. H is the hat matrix up here. Okay, and so the hat matrix and and I minus H are what's called perpendicular projection matrices. And it and to me to to really get a full understanding of multiple linear regression matrix, I think the best way to think about it is from a perpendicular projection matrix standpoint. And so that's what I'm. That, and that's how these videos are going to be from here on for multiple linear regression. Um, now it's not required to have this train of thought. Some of the best books out there on multiple linear regression do not teach it from this perspective. But I love it. So a perpendicular projection matrix is this. We're just going to call it PPM because I get tired of writing that. M is a perpendicular projection matrix onto the column space of X, so column space of X, if and only if it meets these two properties. For every vector in the column space of X, if you pre-multiply it by the perpendicular projection matrix, so MV, you get V back. That's the projection part. If you take a W in the orthogonal complement to the column space of X, and then pre-multiply it by M, so MW, you get, um, this should be zero. I don't know why that is the case. So this should be zero. Okay, and, and hence it's perpendicular. So now, uh, it, we're gonna prove that H is a perpendicular projection matrix onto the column space of X. Okay, and so let's let V be in the column space of X, and that means that it's a that V can be written as a linear combination of the, the columns of X. So this is for some vector in uh, K plus one space, right? So if you multiply this up, you're really taking a linear combination of these X's, and that's what we said V was, right? So H V since we're saying H is the perpendicular projection matrix, HV, and we plug in what V can be represented as, is XA, but then you have the inverse and this, so those become the identity matrix, and you're left with XA, but XA was V, so HV is equal to V, so that satisfies the first property. 
Now let's let W be in the perpendicular projection matrix or the orthogonal complement to the column space of X. Then um, X prime W is the zero vector. And, and, and that's actually how we define orthogonality or, or perpendicular is the dot product. So remember X, when it's transposed, the columns become rows. So this row times this has to be zero. This row has, to, so it's orthogonal to every vector in X, okay? So, and whenever you talk about orthogonality, you, you always need to say with, res, with respect to what inner product, and here we're, it's gonna be the standard inner product, or the dot product. So the dot product of this and any vector in this X is zero. So H, W, now H is this, and W is this, but we just said this is always zero, so it makes the whole thing zero. So it does satisfy this second requirement. Now, I minus H is a perpendicular projection matrix under the orthogonal complement of the column space of X. Let's show that. So let's let V be in this orthogonal complement. So then H times V is zero. Remember, H is the hat matrix, and the hat matrix is up here, right? So this last column is H transpose, or X transpose. So here, X transpose V, but V is in the orthogonal complement, so every one of those is zero. So then when we pre-multiply V by I minus H, and then multiply V in, we get this, but HV was zero, so we get V back. So that actually satisfies property number one. So let's let W be in the column space of X, right? So it's really the complement to this, but the complement of the complement is back to column space of X. So then HW is W, right? We just said that H is a or it's a perpendicular projection matrix on the column space of X. So any vector in the column space, when you pre-multiply by the hat matrix, you get W back. That's what we did up here. So then I minus H, pre-multiply that this matrix by to, to W, multiply W in, we get this, but this was W, so W minus W is zero, and that satisfies the second property of perpendicular projection matrix. All right, so what the heck is going on here? So here's a ge uh, geometric illustration of what's going on. So first we gotta look at the calm space of X. So that means every possible linear combination of the column spaces, it spans some subspace through um, Rn, right? Because there's k plus 1 vectors, and then we take a linear combination of them, they're n by k plus 1, you're, you know, n by 1 vectors, and there's k plus 1 of them, they're independent. So it spans some subspace through Rn space, right? So, and we generically represent that by this plane. Now, we have some y vector that's not in the column space of x, so it's up here, and our goal is to project it down into the column space of x, so the closest uh, vector in the column space of x to this, which is this. They call the projection of y into the column space of x. And that is uh, this, the least squares estimate. So that is the fitted model. That line, which is x beta hat, and then of course this was, was hy. And h is a perpendicular projection matrix onto the column space of x. So actually no matter where y is, if we pre-multiply it by h, it projects it down orthogono orth orthogonally into the column space of x. Now this vector here is y minus x ball or x hat. And if you think about it, like this vector plus this vector should equal y. So if we have y hat plus y minus y hat, the y hat's cancel, we're left with y, right? So we get that back. But y minus y hat, the, res the residual is this. And, and, when, and I minus H is a perpendicular projection matrix onto the orthogonal uh, complement of the column space of X. So any Y vector, if we pre-multiply it by this matrix, 
it, it produces vectors that are orthogonal to the column space of X. Okay, and that's actually the, the most critical component of multiple linear regression is that we can take any response vector and decompose it into two orthogonal components. So our response vector can be thought of as the fitted model plus the residual, but these two guys, so the fitted model lives in the column space of X and the residual lives in the orthogonal complement. So the estimation space and the air space, and, it, and it's this exact type relationship. So now let's go through some of the properties of these projection matrices, and we'll prove some of them along the way, but right now we're just going to list them out and call it done. So the properties of H and I minus H. Um, H is symmetric. It's idempotent. I minus H is symmetric, and it's idempotent. The column space of H, so the column space of our perpendicular projection matrix is actually equal to the column space of X. Now we prove that in this video here, perpendicular projection matrices. The column space of I minus H is exactly the same as the orthogonal complement of the column space of X. H times X is X, so it projects it back into X, column space of X. I minus H times x is 0. Now the rank of h, since h is a perpendicular, or it's a, uh, it's idempotent, so it equals the trace of h, which then is, is equal to k plus 1. And we actually prove that in this video that I call idempotent matrices. The rank of i minus h is a trace of i minus h, which then is n minus k plus 1. And also i minus h times h is 0. Okay, and then over the next few videos, we'll look at some of these properties and definitely make use of some of these properties as we derive, you know, hypothesis tests, confidence intervals, we look at residual analyses. It all becomes so important. Well, that's all I have for today. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.